Okay, let's go back to 2014. And I'm not being cryptic with what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing this to be absolutely obvious. This is the shirt from Halloween Horror Nights 24. Obviously the one from Orlando because I didn't get to go to 2014's event in Hollywood. I still haven't been to Hollywood's event and doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon unless something drastic comes my way. But I digress. Now, I want to go back to July 17th. Now, why July 17th? Well, July 17th, people that were on Twitter that day saw a very interesting post from the official Halloween Twitter account at Halloween Movies, basically telling us that there was going to be a contest where you can win a trip to Universal Orlando Resort on them and be able to experience Halloween at Halloween Horror Nights 24. Uh-oh. Here's the issue with this. This sounds great. The only problem? This wasn't announced by Universal officially yet. So they kind of swept it under the rug and people kind of forgot about it, probably hoping that not many people saw it. I know a lot of people did, but luckily they didn't really say as much. Like it wasn't as much getting out that year as there could have been, especially when it comes to Halloween. They're like, when is it coming? When is it coming? And we had to wait until over a month later August 28th, and we had it announced along with the uh, final reveal of Halloween Horror Nights 24. So, I want to talk a little bit about myself here, because we do that from time to time here on the Popcast Network. I did the house. Very fortunate to be able to do this house. Uh, it was located, of course, in Sprung Tent 2, which is where Insidious was last year, and it's where uh, all signs point to Texas Chainsaw Massacre being this year. Basically, it's the ginormous house facade. It makes perfect sense. That would be the case. That's probably what we're going to get again this year. I went through that house eight times, and in the span of two weeks, that's not that bad, given the fact that I know I technically started going for Halloween Horror Nights 22. I didn't hit my stride until 23, so 24 was kind of like, okay, now I'm in the driver's seat. I'm going to really make this event work. And in 25 last year, yeah, all bets were off, and I hit everything numerous times in the span of about four weeks uh, combined, obviously not together, first three weeks of the event and closing week, which is what I'm doing again this year. I actually have 19 nights of the event, plus employee preview. So, yeah, that ultimate frequent fear ticket... Totally worth my money. But anyway, so uh, we got to go through it. Like I said, I went through it eight times in the span of two weeks. That's not that bad. And there was one time, thanks to the social media interaction of the HHN compound, that I was selected to do a special social media meetup that we went over to the Hard Rock Hotel. We had a Q&A with Doc from Season 7 of Face Off, and Mamba, the voodoo queen, randomly shows up, and she scared Joe, that was funny, and there was a lot of really cool things that happened, like there was a lot of the uh, various Orlando, uh, I guess you would say, vloggers and podcasters that were there, or like Andy and Brian were there from Orlando United, and Eric was there from Behind the Thrills, and Tim was there because he went there with my friend Jeff. The K-pop nerd who was my roommate at Cabana Bay last year. So yeah, there were a lot of people there that most of you out there probably do know. A some a little more so than others, but that's another story for another time. And that right there is for Loopy Lulu, who loves it when I say that. Now, uh, other than this, we got to go to the house itself, and we met up with Mike Aiello and TJ Manorino, and they did an impromptu Q&A, and then they split up the group into two separate groups. Half went with TJ, I know Tim went with TJ, and we went with Mike and had a lights-on tour of the house. Oh, well, it was absolutely incredible to be able to walk through Halloween with someone that passionate about the project. And afterwards, there was a little bit of a uh, little whispering around during the event itself that they were going to let us go through the house. They let us go through the house. Two by two. Yeah, so myself and Joe went through Halloween alone, with no one else in the house except for the characters. Incredible experience. That's the reason why, to this day, it stands high above everything else except for Werewolf, because we had the same experience there as the best experience I ever had at Halloween Horror Nights. I think if I had anything I could compare it to for last year, I would have to say Run. Yeah, Run without a doubt. Run Blood, Sweat, and Fears. All the uh, interaction I had with uh, the Enforcers and uh, 
people involved with the plague, yeah, and uh, obviously the Candy Girls. There was a lot of really cool things that were done in Run. I can't forget the Blitzkrieg Brothers either. I will see you all, most likely, later this year. Now, that was 2014. Now, let's go forward to the present time, and let's talk about July 6th. Okay, on July 6th, there was a GIF that was posted on the at Halloween Horror Nights Orlando Twitter feed. And it was basically like a heart monitor. And when you clicked it to play the video, it beeped. But the beep sounded different. It didn't sound like a regular machine. It sounded actually like it could be something else. And quickly, people realized... It's Morse code, but what's it for? That's the question. So, of course, as most of us are down with the LT, when it comes down to it, we know how to break these riddles and clues. So, real quick, we realize, yes, it is Morse code, and yes, this time, they were talking about the clue equaling out to Livingston County. With a Y at the end of it was really funny, some of the pictures I saw. But what's Livingston County? Well, there's a Livingston County in Michigan. That's where hell is. Literally, hell, Michigan. There's one in Kentucky. There's one in Missouri. And there's one in New York. Wait a minute. There's another one. Yeah, that's right. Illinois. What's in Illinois? The fictional town of Haddonfield. You know what that means? It means that it was a guarantee that our next announcement was going to be the return of Michael Myers to Halloween Horror Nights. And sure enough, the next day... At about 12.31 p.m., there was a video that was posted. A very short video, but basically one to whet our appetites. And it said, Happy Halloween. And we got our official announcement of Halloween, Hell Comes to Haddonfield, coming to Halloween Horror Nights. On both coasts. Yeah, I will get to Hollywood momentarily. Mike posted a blog post at uh, Universal Orlando's uh, blog site. And basically uh, told us a lot of interesting things about it. He says that this is continuation of the story. This is a continuation of the story. And it's going to basically start where we left off in 2014. And given the fact, it's the same situation with Werewolf. It was two years prior, and then Hollywood got it the other year. And then if you were able to go to both events, you could see the same maze in its own right three times. Same with Halloween. The difference is, Halloween, you're not seeing the same maze because it's based on the second film. You're going to be able to see the same finale twice, it's just this time it's going to be right at the front instead of at the end. So, basically what we're going to do is we're going to walk between the houses, walk between the neighborhoods, and then we're going to be, bam, smack dab right in front of Haddonfield Memorial Hospital, and that's where we're going to continue our journey and continue to get stalked by the shape around each and every corner. We're also going to recreate all of the iconic events from the story, and it was also said that they were going to uh, mention the fiery end of Michael Myers. So, it's interesting, very interesting this would be said. And this is going to be like a best of, of season, season. This is going to be a best of the uh, second film. And it's going to really play into the love that a lot of horror fans have for Michael Myers as a character. And the fact that we're continuing from where we left off and where we're going from here. Now, does that mean we're going to get Halloween 3 down the line? I doubt it, but you know, stranger things have happened. So, <clears throat> basically right now, the good thing is... They have a great, great relationship with Malik Akkad. So much so that I mentioned the HHN compound in 2014. They also did a special showing of the original Halloween film with Malik Akkad as a Q&A at the end. So that was something that they did. So obviously they have like a nice little uh, combo and they made it work. They made it work time in and time out. So uh, a lot of interesting things I want to say from this... Um, I mentioned a couple of things that were said in the blog post. I want to mention a couple of things that were said in uh, the media email that we got. And uh, one of the things I want to state is uh, it says, like I said before, we're going to begin with the first scene being the last scene of Halloween Horror Nights 24's very successful maze. And we're going to be dodging Michael Myers' knife around each and every corner. And we're going to be showing us a little bit of everything from this. Like I said, it's a kind of a greatest hits of the second film. And another thing that's mentioned here is the fact 
that Mike took to Twitter later on and confirmed this is going to be in B-79, the Parade Building Warehouse. And that's the good thing about this, because I think this fits really well in Parade. I really do. I think this is actually going to be a great location for it. Now, we also saw a behind-the-scenes picture. We've written a lot of those lately. We've got a lot from Cobweb. We've got one from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Pretty sure that we're going to be getting one. We may get something from Chance's house sooner rather than later because there's really nothing about it. I think we're going to get something soon. That remains to be seen. But, like, I'm talking about this shot, this picture that was shown to us, and it was basically one of the houses you're going to see. There's going to be a window, and I said, like, a diagram what the windows are supposed to look like in the end. And it kind of reminded me somewhat of the church facade in the middle of The Walking Dead, uh, The Living and the Dead, last year in the parade building. Same shrubbery around it and everything, and it made sense. And that's when I knew, it's like, it, this has to be parade. This is, like, perfectly built for parade. So, uh, Mike took to the Frequent Fear podcast and basically gave us a little bit more about this maze uh, in his talking. And he basically said that the layout is kind of more in tune with what the Forsaken was in 2011. You got a lot of tight corridors, like confined spaces, and then bam, right in the middle, the giant set piece, the big facade being the Haddonfield Hospital right in the middle. So, and it makes perfect sense. And Mike loves the movie. And... It's really great because we're continuing the night. Obviously, everybody thought Lori was safe. It's not over yet. The terror is continuing. And it's really cool that what they're doing with this. We're actually going to walk through the window and then, bam, we're right in the neighborhood. Right after Dr. Loomis shoots Michael Myers, we're going to walk through the window where he is not there anymore laying on the grass. I'm sure we're going to see some sort of an imprint. I almost guarantee they do something with that. I think it would be awesome to see. Kind of like we talked about on uh, the podcast last night when uh, Tyler mentioned the kind of the effect that they used with the uh, with Gothic, the uh, the Gothic uh, mashup uh, from Gothic they did in uh, Monsters and Mayhem last year, and they basically had where you look down and you thought that you were like a billion feet up in the air because everything was upside down, everything was on the roof, and then it was kind of like projecting that it would be on the ground. I think that would be a really cool way to uh, shoot that. I think it'd be really great to actually look out the window. And that's not the only time I think they'll do that. I think if they do stick to that idea, I think they do it in The Exorcist as well, because that makes sense given the finale of the house itself. At least what I think it might be. So another thing we're going to get is the fact that the parade building has had a lot of really subtle facades. Or not so facades in some cases. It's kind of like very unassuming. If you don't know that there's a horror event going on, you just hear music and everything, you walk into this big giant warehouse, and then all of a sudden, just like with Roanoke, it's like, uh, what is this? I walk in, and it's like, oh my god, we're outside. So it's pretty much kind of like that, and that's exactly what we've got. Something subtle that's going to get us in there, and then right in the middle... The big set piece is the Haddonfield Hospital, and I think that that's going to be awesome. It's kind of like when we were walking through Freddy vs. Jason, and all of a sudden, after we got through Camp Crystal Lake, like we walked right through the final room, and then bam, we're right in front of the house. We're right in Elm Street, and we have the jump rope children on the left-hand side of us. We have the fog. Everything is just completely changed demeanor. I think that they're going to do something like that, and it makes perfect sense to me. Um... A lot of people are wondering how the finale is going to go, because obviously it does involve actual fire. But one of the things that I think they're going to take from is Herschel's Barn. And Herschel's Barn obviously had, like, a fire aspect to it, but it wasn't actually on fire. I think it's a lot of theatrics that are going to make this work, and lighting. Lighting and theatrics. And that was pretty much mentioned, actually, in there. And another thing I can say right now that I think it's also going to take a little bit of from, and that's going to be Evil Dead. I think it's going to take a lot from Herschel's Barn. I think it'll take a lot from Evil Dead. And I think it's going to take a little bit from the Walking Dead attraction in Hollywood. I think that's probably how they're going to make it look like everything's on fire around you, including Michael Myers. Uh, they did allude to the fact that the uh, sauna scene, uh, the whole thing we made fun of last year, walkers in a hot tub, the hot tub's coming back. Yeah, that's right, party time. So uh, most likely the smell of chlorine's coming back too. So yeah, that should be fun. Looking forward to that. It's uh, going to be a great experience. And I'll talk a little bit more about Orlando's version, the one I'm actually going to get to go through. But before I do that, I got to go into Hollywood. And with Hollywood, we get to July 6th. And John Murdy takes to the At Horror Nights 
Twitter feed for Hollywood, and he simply quotes Annie and says, Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you, tomorrow, you're only a day away. Later on, obviously, but that three-hour time difference kind of changes everything around, you thought he was finished. But Michael Myers will make his return to hashtag Universal HHN. He was my patient for 15 years. He became an obsession with me until I realized that there was nothing within him. Neither conscience nor reason that was even remotely human. An hour ago, I stood up and I fired six shots into him. He just got up and walked away. I'm talking about the real possibility that he is still out there. Obviously, words from Dr. Samuel Loomis. And uh, the Cordettes uh, saying, uh, Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. Samhain, thank you, Dr. Jimmy, for the pronunciation. It means Lord of the Dead, the Festival of Samhain, October 31st. The nightmare has only just begun at Universal Halloween Horror Nights. Hell came to Haddonfield on the small town on Halloween night. October 31st, 1978. That's the night an escaped mental patient named Michael Myers returned to his hometown. The place where he famously murders his sister 15 years earlier to take bloody revenge. In the immediate aftermath of the murder of three teenagers, the traumatized citizens of Haddonfield thought that they had survived the worst. But the real horror was just beginning. Welcome to Halloween. Hell Comes to Haddonfield, terrifying sequel to 2015's Halloween Michael Myers Returns. The highest rated maze in the history of Hollywood's Halloween Horror Nights. It picks up with the classic film left off, obviously the final confrontation between Dr. Loomis and Michael Myers, only to realize that the real terror is just getting started. As Dr. Loomis well knows, you can't kill the boogeyman. Michael Myers is still out there. <clears throat> now he relentlessly pursues his prey from the sleepy streets of Haddonfield to the labyrinth hallways of the Haddonfield Memorial Hospital. This night of nightmares isn't over, and hell, it has come to Haddonfield. So, uh, Murdy goes into more details, because obviously, he's a little more on the theatrical side. That's the reason why we all love him. And he says, this is a totally new maze, direct sequel to last year's maze. The maze obviously had a code name. The code name was Wisconsin, and some of us actually got Wisconsin. Now, granted, there is a video that exists of mine that does not say what Wisconsin really was, but I did take to Twitter and the fan forums and message boards, and I said it myself, and I just said it to Murdy on Twitter. So, yeah, still counts. So, uh, there's that. Now, this is going to be located in the Jurassic Park overflow queue. And a lot of people were thinking this was going to be Krampus. I think Krampus is on the back lot. Pretty positive that's going to be the case. A lot of people thinking that it was The Conjuring. I'm 50-50 if it's going to happen at this point. You never know. Could end up being a water world. Possibility. I hear rumors that's going to start con uh, construction soon. And we want to talk about Wisconsin. Why is it Wisconsin? Well, someone associated from the film came from Wisconsin. And the people associated with the film are the Cordettes. And they did Mr. Sandman for the soundtrack. Uh, they're from Sheboygan. And uh, that's the reason why it was Wisconsin. So like I said, some of us got it. Some of us didn't. Earlier in the year, Murdy says there'll be no repeat mazes. It's true. This isn't a repeat at all. It's kind of designed to throw us off. That's how Carney works. That's the reason I can I can break these codes time in and time out. It's a movie that's never been featured at Halloween Horror Nights. It's very, very much fan requested, and it's been for the last several years. And he's going to do some original film production, and it's going to include like the wig from Uncle Kui. I I don't know exactly what that's going to mean. I guess that's going to be fun to see what Murdy does. I haven't seen this film yet. I'm going to do that later on, but. I think that it should be interesting to see exactly what he takes from it. And it's also going to be the finale that's itself is going to be something completely original. Something not from the film. And something that is going to be completely opposite from what they do in Orlando. So it's an idea that John and Chris Williams had. And basically it's inspired by something very much in the spirit of the film. It should be very interesting. So he did one of the uh, the tweet Q&As, and there was a couple of things that came from it. And Twitter had some issues, and of course, he had to like answer them different ways. Uh, the fan asked at Scare All A last year, when Halloween was announced, if uh, Halloween 2 was coming, and he got thinking. The year's maze last year was so successful, and he loves the property, so a sequel seemed like a no-brainer. 
and the ending is, like I said, not going to be used in Orlando. And it's interesting that he says all this stuff because I think both mazes this year are going to be very similar yet very different. And I think it's going to be just like Halloween we did in 2014 and Halloween that they did last year in Hollywood. I think that's probably going to be how we go. And I think you're going to be able to see differences and similarities in both mazes, and I think that's exactly the direction we go. And it sounds like that Doris Day is going to be next, and I think that means that something that has been long awaited is probably coming to the event. I guess we'll uh, see what happens with that. Doris Day did do a lot of Christmas songs, so yeah, uh, sometimes obviosity is actually the carny way, I would know. So, <clears throat> we'll see what happens with that. And we'll see what happens with Hollywood's event. Obviously, uh, we here on the Popcast Network, we don't do podcasts on Hollywood's event, but we will mention things from time to time, like when other things get announced that we're not getting here. Uh, they're not going to be separate podcasts. We're probably going to just put them in when we actually get another announcement of our own, especially if it's a share. Sounds like from the rumors that we're hearing, most of the event is going to be shared this year. And most of everything still to be announced from Hollywood is coming to Orlando with a couple notable exceptions. And um, there's also, Murdy's talking about that we're getting a big surprise. Hollywood's going to get a big surprise. And uh, other than Doris Day. And I think, personally, that I th they're going to announce the Terror Tram. Yeah, remember the thing I said about... Uh, I said this on message boards, said this on Horror Night Nightmares. I said this a lot of times. John Murdy this year has a good chance to get the Exorcist, which he's got. The Exorcist to share with Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers. Who's missing? Yep, Leatherface. Stay tuned for that one. But that's just my speculation. When it comes down to it, honestly, I cannot see if you have the rights to be able to get the big four. You're not going to do it. I can't see someone turning that down. So, maybe just maybe uh, the back lots are going to be, uh, well, let's just say meat, meat is murder. Yeah, so there. Uh, just a, just like a spitball in here, just throwing things against the wall, throwing baseballs in archery target like David Letterman used to do back in the day. So, uh, that's what we've got uh, for the video this week. Um, our next video coming up very soon. Real quick, wanted to uh, thank everyone that listened to our Halloween Horror Nights 26 podcast last night. Very successful. Did really well. Had a lot of really great people in the chat room. A lot of great interactivity. Had a lot of cool questions that were asked. And right now, I can honestly say, and I alluded to this somewhat at the end of our podcast last night, we're working on something big. Something we've been trying to get for a long time, and there is a good possibility that in the very near future, you're not going to just have to go to this YouTube channel to get the podcast from the Podcast Network. At least when it comes to Horror Nights. And if everything works out, maybe, just maybe, your wrestling podcast eventually will end up in this meaner, meaner, end up in this way as well. I don't know why I said meaner. That's weird. Uh, it's been a long day. A long weekend. Um, I just haven't even started work yet this week. So there you go. Three days straight starting tomorrow, today, tomorrow, and uh, the day after. So yeah, that's what we've got this week. Uh, real quick, I do want to uh, throw my shout outs and I'm going to take it home here. So uh, once again, if you want all the information coming from Orlando, you can follow at Horror Nights ORL. If you want to have all the information from Hollywood, you can follow at Horror Nights on Twitter. Both of those on Twitter, obviously. Follow the Podcast Network on Twitter, at Podcast Network, and uh, you can uh, check out our Facebook fan page here on Pop. It is under Podcast Network. We have a Zazzle store merchandise available at uh, zazzle.com backslash Podcast Network. There's some great Halloween Horror Nights forums on the internet. Check them out at Horror Night Nightmares, Orlando United, and USH forums off Inside Universal's website. Great Halloween Horror Nights related sites like HomemadeHaunt.net and FirstClassHorror.com, HHNCrypt.com, HHNLegacy.com, HHNYearbook.com, HHNUnofficial.com, and two great podcasts, 
First off, talking about uh, Christopher Ripley and Logan Seculo, as well as uh, Scott Garland for the Scare Zone podcast. That's www.scarezone.com. And uh, friends of the Popcast Network, Matt and Quint from Neo Zaz at the Catacombs of Halloween Horror Nights.com. That's neozaz.com. You can uh, follow along with the Popcast Network's Elite, the Halloween Horror Nights panel we have here on the network. First off, uh, Homemade Haunt. That's uh, Tyler and Andrew. Uh, check them out at Homemade Haunt on Twitter. Uh, the link in the description bar of their channel. Check out Cameron at Cryptic Cam. Check out Ian at Theme Park Browse. Check out Travis at Travis Coaster. Check out Aaron at Class underscore Horror. And check out Will at HHN Dog. Uh, links for everyone's YouTube channels are going to be in the description bar. Some great, uh, solid Halloween Horror Nights updaters. Like the Horror Nights updaters themselves, obviously, talking about Psycho Massacre Films, my friend John, my friend Vic, Dr. Emma Brown 1, my friend Neil UKHHN, my friend Aaron the Red Steel TV, my friend David the Crazy Englishman, my friend Jeremy Jeremy Films with two Zs, and uh, my friend Keegan, HHN Assassin, uh, my friend Chris, HHN Legacy, uh, my friend Jose, Thrill Seeker Network, he's uh, Mr. HHN after all, and uh, Horror Squad TV. You also can check out the incomparable Dr. Jimmy, uh, Docky Mo on YouTube, uh, Tim and Jen at the Tim Tracker, uh, Kyle from View from the Cheap Seats, Liz from Disco Lazita, uh, Mark from the Man in the Mala Vest, Chris, a Zkeeper83, he's really uh, breaking out there when it comes to uh, vlogs and Horror Nights content, so check him out, give Chris a view, he's a really good person and he definitely knows what he's talking about, and a great character that I'm positive is going to uh, be out for me this year <laughs> in all the right ways. And probably somebody that I'm going to have to duck and run from. A awesome character. Like I said, one of the Blitzkrieg brothers last year and run. Somebody that I'm pretty sure is uh, really uh, excited to see me this year, if you know what I mean. Uh, that is Andrew R. Davis. Also check out Friends of the Popcast Network that now have become members of the Popcast Network. Uh, Random Tales uh, 30 and... 30. God, what a long day. At Random Tales on Twitter and at Loopy Lulu 3009. So that's the video this week. Once again, I want to thank you guys and girls out there for watching. Later, uh, actually later tonight, since we're actually filming this right now, in about an hour when I'm filming this, I'm going to be going on Alex's. Alex's. I will be going on Alex Show's uh, podcast. It's the Popcast Network taking over because it's me, it's Cameron, it's Will, and it's Travis, and we're all going to be talking with Alex about Chance and about Halloween and about all sorts of Halloween Horror Nights related content. Check that out. You can uh, check that out as well, so if you're able to, uh, listen to that. If you haven't listened to the Halloween Horror Nights 26 podcast, link in the description bar. And uh, real quick, I want to thank you guys. And Wow, God, horrible day. I want to thank you guys and girls out there for watching. Thank you for uh, checking out the Popcast Network, and thank you for your support. We really appreciate it, 100%. And until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all i got to say about that.